Hello guys, it's been a while and time for the new lecture. Today I just want to explain you how to play against extremely annoying and always uh, uh, very difficult to meet from Black's point of view, Trompovsky. Uh, Trompovsky happens when White goes with d4, knight f6 and bishop g5. You immediately have to understand the idea of Trompovsky players uh, apart from confusing you with this surprising uh, bishop move. They just want to take on f6 and afterwards keep on exchanging pieces and have a little bit better uh, position in the middle game thanks to healthier pawn structure. Uh, I don't want to tell you anything more about this, but that the subject of this lecture is going to be nothing else but 94. Somewhere on the channel, you're going to be able to find the d5 second move by black, uh, which scores really well for black and in conversation uh, between Magnus Carlsen and Gary Kasparov, I remember that they mentioned somewhere that the d5 is one of the best uh, options for black against Trumpovsky. They both played it, but occasionally, uh, 94, it's not, it's not bad to play, to shake off a little bit of things and to say, okay, let's just go with some crazy stuff and to play kind of a uh, tactical type of the game. I just want to tell you one thing before I start uh, going with the lines. Uh, when I used to play Trompovsky with white pieces and I played more than 5,000 games in Blitz tournament and rapid chess uh, from white side, uh, I liked to face 94 a lot and I usually played either Raptor defense with h4 or classic with bishop f4. Let's get started. Uh, hopefully you're gonna like this uh, for black and you're gonna tell me uh, in your comments uh, after the lesson if you like the video or not. So let's go after like bishop g5, knight e4. They have three options. They have the main option with bishop f4. Uh, they have raptor defense with h4. You can also find that from white's point of view somewhere on the channel. And finally bishop h4. Let's begin with the bishop h4. It's the least common thing here. Uh, you just chase the bishop away. And they go f3 that's the main move those who play bishop g3 you just have to go with h5 to chase that bishop away with h4 uh, and it's quite interesting if they go like f3 you just take and open up the game for what for the bishop pair uh, if they go with bishop e5 chase that bishop away kind of trap it they gotta play f3 you take take and here you have this important e6 move when they take you play g4 the point of g4 is that you want to go with the queen g5 bishop g7 and afterwards knight c6 that pawn on e5 is about to fall and somehow once again you'll enjoy thanks to the bishop air finally h4 is always in my opinion suspicious because when you take uh, creating a pawn structure like this where they they were forced to take by f pawn on g3 somehow it doesn't seem to be uh, looking good for white and uh, i dislike this type of pawn structures for white then you should be going with e6 defend that uh, g4 i uh, played few blitz games like this you just uh, fight for the strong control of the center uh, once again you open up the game for your bishops and you should enjoy this position so much Finally, if bishop g3, h5, and e3, you just go d5, full control of the center. When they force you, you'll take on g3, you'll win the bishop pair, and you'll keep on opening up the game or make it active so to keep it open for your bishops. That's why I'm of opinion that I have to play f3. You take on h4, they take on e4. You play c5. You immediately have to break and have to play very actively in this game because you need to give your bishops first of all they lack the dark square bishop so we want to play c5 queen b6 go after the d4 uh, b2 pawn and d4 pawns then uh, we enjoy the bishop pair and since we enjoy the bishop pair we just want to um, get the game open of course uh, they all go with a3 and you play bishop h6 i played lots of games like this and it looks extremely difficult uh, for white uh, if white is unfamiliar what to do in this type of games. But I just have to tell you, at the same time, this position is pretty annoying for playing uh, if they know what to do and you don't know what to do. So you make sure to learn your lines, to learn these ideas. And when you play bishop h6, you just want to go after the pawn on e3. So after e3, bishop h6, uh, the best move is knight c3, but nobody plays that knight move. 
nobody plays that move because we simply take on a3 and now the best move is bishop c4 they want to play queen h5 and in at some point knight f3 knight e5 uh, rook f1 and uh, looks very dangerous for us in this position believe it or not the best move is rook f8 you over protect and uh, make sure to safeguard this f7 square with the rook but at the same time uh, we're avoiding all kinds of sacrifices on f7 uh, threats uh, with queen h5 and keep in mind we're up a pawn so it's very important sometimes to be familiar with this type of defensive theoretical moves in theory in the past main move was king f2 and i like to play against that move because uh, we do have a bishop here we do have an early uh, possibility to uh, simply uh, get out it with our queen uh, and usually it goes on b6 and somehow that king on uh, f2 doesn't seem to me uh, anything that's special actually it looks like a weakness so you play it, c takes d4 yes you do weak uh, you do fix uh, their pawn structure but you actually open up the diagonal for your bishop on h6 of course you play knight c6 here now you threaten queen b6 to win the pawn on the spot uh, either d4 or b2 so they gotta play uh, something like uh, for example c3 looks very tempting but then you go queen b6 and d5 and they are in problems and knight f3 looks tempting but then you play d6 and then you can think of ideas such as bishop g4 h3 rook can go on the g file and always that idea with the queen b6 when they go knight c3 they say hey man you can't play queen b6 because i'm gonna harass your queen with the knight e5 and then you just have to show patience and a good understanding of these positions then you just play d6 and you say okay i was watching video of that crazy coach maya on his the butcher channel and he says play d6 don't go with a queen b6 don't give them 95 and give yourself possibility to do what let's say they go most logical move knight f3 boom believe it or not you put your king in safety and in a very unusual way you want to carry on with the attack and now on your question how can we carry on with the attack here what is this guy talking about then your king goes on h8 rook goes on g8 and you go after the king on f2 so after bishop b5 bishop g7 now once again uh, focus on having some queen b6 ideas queen d3 opening up the game with f5 i'm showing you a very strong position for black this is very likable type of the game from black's point of view king on f2 definitely looks weak we're about to break the white center black looks good i'm showing you the game from uh, iccf you know how much i like current pundits games because they just use engines and they know uh, what are good and what are bad and you absolutely can believe these lines and what i'm showing you here finally if after a3 bishop h6 they don't uh, play that but they play knight c3 once again i'm repeating take on e3 and after this play this very very important precise defensive rook f8 move and get a nice game i wouldn't bother you with the bishop h4 anymore so it's time for the raptor defense once again if you want to find how to play this system from white's point of view find it on the channel it's called a raptor trompowski uh after h4 the very first thing that i have to explain you is don't you dare to take that pawn on g5 uh this was one of my favorite variations with the white pieces uh for all these years uh white just opens the h file uh, white always wants to sack the pawn by uh, pushing that pawn to g6 breaking pawns and forcing black to take by f pawn this is very difficult for playing you don't even have time for g6 because then you're facing another type of positions but that's not a point if you want to find how to play this from white's point of view uh find uh my video on my channel but here i'm just explaining you how to face these positions on h4 play c5 and uh, all these guys are familiar with that d takes c5 line uh, for example famous guy gotham chess uh, he constantly keeps playing d5 uh, right now for the first time i have to tell you that i played uh, three blitz games as the butcher against him against d5 twice from the butcher account and once from the hidden one 
I beat him 3-0. Sorry, but I just have to reveal that. Uh, he always plays d5 and he plays these positions really well in one of these games he was winning. Uh, so when you play d5, uh, I'll explain everything. You kind of close the center, play some other type of positions. But uh, traditionally, all these guys used to play d takes c5. Nowadays, almost no one plays d takes c5. And when I played online a uh, couple of games, um, those guys who play d takes c5, they were hoping for knight g5, h takes g5 to sack the pawn. Or if you go after the pawn with knight a6, to go with some, I don't know, queen d4, crazy defense of the pawn uh, and some activity with the g6. And what is always fantastic? No. After d takes c5, you have a specialty here. Specialty that you won't find in too many games, especially I don't think you won't find in any of these videos. You just go with d5. That's a strong novelty. That's a fantastic move. Uh, it almost refutes this line on the spot. I won all my games in Blitz. Simply, they cannot take Ampassan because you play Queen b6, threatening mate on f2 and threatening this pawn on b2. And here, if they go with bishop e3, you just take on b2. And if they go like this, uh, bishop d4, you play Queen b4 and take on d6. Position where you grab the pawn on b2. Position where you, uh, you absolutely uh, left them with the three pawn islands with the pawn on h4 standing <laughs> Nobody knows why there uh, Definitely looks amazing for black. You just want to play <coughs> knight c6 and possibly some e5 uh, If they go with queen d4 you just capture play knight c6 and if bishop b2 e5 and grab the pawn on b6 uh, If they go d takes e7 bishop e7 I just analyzed this position, knight a3, knight e5. Uh, black is down two pawns, but black is almost completely winning since you're having threats such as bishop before. Uh, they can't move. Uh, first, they cannot play f3 because of knight g3. They cannot play knight f3 because of bishop before. If they play long castle, you play knight f2. Uh, position is almost winning, but you have to know these four sequence of moves and not to be afraid to go into a position where you're down two pawns, but just like you see, you're just completely winning. My analysis that you can always purchase as a PGN uh, go a, a lot deeper than this, but I believe this should be absolutely enough for you just to give you the sense of these positions. So after d takes e5, d5, you just make this novelty. Most of these guys against me played knight d2. Uh, I even played against GM. And he played knight d2, of course, I captured on c5, and take a look at this. Now I just want to play f6 and d5. And what am I going to do? I'm going to build up a strong center. He's going to have lots of problems, practical problems with my center. That pawn on h4, which makes uh, even their short castle afterwards very difficult and almost um, uh, crazy for playing. Uh, here, uh, no matter what, you just want to play f6 followed by e5. Usually... Uh, they go e3, you go f6, you go e5, you go knight c6, bishop e6, queen d7, long castles, and black is fantastic. Practically only move uh, that they can do in this position is, for example, uh, e4. But let's let's see knight b3. You once again take tempo f6, tempo e5, and what do you want? I mean, uh, you, you know the golden uh, Nimzovich, or a Nimzovich rule, who says when your opponent plays um, on the wing you should be playing in the center here we have a fantastic center pawn center well they have this stupid pawn on h4 these double pawns broken pawns and this just looks fantastic for us that's why they have to play e4 uh, we of course play h6 chasing that bishop away on your question why don't we play f6 now because uh, we can go like this but they have this stupid check to win the knight that's a very nice trick so that's why you play h6 and now they can play uh, bishop f4 because you grab the pawn. If they play bishop e3, you just go d4, bishop f4, you play a6. It's a very important move not to give them bishop e5. Then you just go with knight c6 and d5. I don't want to bother you anymore with these lines. This is just so nice and uh, I have some, uh, just like I told you, the, the way deeper analysis with g5. So let's make them on the king's side and enjoying these positions. Once again, if you want to get this, you just have to purchase the PGN about this one. And finally, uh, after h4, d, the c5, let's see 
what the Gotham chess on regular basis does with the white pieces d5. Here you have to know your stuff. Uh, in both of these games I played h6 against him. In once I outplayed him pretty easily. In another one I had uh, a lost position and somehow he got too active but I tricked him eventually. So after like h6 you have two kinds of things. Bishop f4 and bishop c1. If bishop goes back on c1 then you go d6 and you have uh, what what kind of weakness do you have uh, unnecessary weakness and what kind of weakness do they have we have a type of semi Benoni so they will play like uh, for example f3 e4 knight c3 or knight d2 e4 that's the same same, uh, same uh, semi Benoni type of a game they have stupid h4 pawn uh, overexposed pawn structure and kind of extended pawn structure you have a little bit weak on h6 uh, but I consider Weakness on h6, definitely more solid than weakness on h6. So after knight e2, bring it back. e4, open up the game immediately. Um, c4, you go g6, bishop g7, you take on d5, and we have typical Benoni position where I can even find some adequately, you know, like uh, ideas cope with h6 in some Benoni positions. But I absolutely cannot justify h4 move for white. So that's how you play, and of course you go queen e7, b6, bishop uh, a6, or b8, b5, or rook e8, and so on and so on. If they take, you just want to take an open f file. Knight goes on e5. You always want to control the dark squares with g5, and that's a typical Benoni setup and typical Benoni game. Fine for black. <laughs> After h6, Gotham uh, plays regularly the best move, bishop f4, queen b6. You threaten the pawn. And now it's very important for these guys who play with white pieces to know the best move. It's knight d2. But if they play queen c1, boom, c4. Who would say that c4 almost wins the game on the spot? Okay, not wins in the classic sense of that word, but you actually win the pawn. So if they go e3, check, and you play c3 and you grab the pawn. Here, you didn't want to play knight d2 and grabbing on d5 because they would take on c4. But you first break their pawn structure now you capture big queen and you have absolutely a nice position black is better uh, of course all these guys who play this line they know 92 and then you grab on b2 this is what you have to know uh, of course i took you know my games queen b2 knight e4 and you give check and now you are about to win either knight on e4 or bishop on f4 when they play c3 queen e4 e3 this is interesting position and this is uh what i find pretty playable from white's point of view okay engines go crazy here and they really support and like these positions for black but we're not engines don't forget that and that's why white in these positions have from practical point of view and speaking you know like um, uh, from humans point of view pretty big difficulties black have in this position uh, because they don't know how to uh, play with this queen we're underdeveloped and that's why I have to show you a couple of ideas so after like this you play d6 it's very important to know that you always have to make shelter for your queen with queen f5 and going back with the queen on d7 those who play f3 you just play queen f5 whether they go G, I mean they have to go g4 because they can play for bishop is hanging you go back and you just have to uh, accept that you're gonna be passive he's gonna have like development in advantage I we, I can see that we're so much better we're up upon engines are going to say we're so much better I, I disagree with that um, we are fine we're up upon and all we have to do is to find a way to solidify ourselves if that happens we're gonna easily win the game but it's not easy to solidify yourself right so that's one thing uh i believe in one of the games against gotham i played uh, against f3 another one knight f3 uh, you just go knight d7 those who play knight f3 they doesn't show like such a big ambition to immediately punish your queen c4 watch out they threaten uh, bishop d3 to trap the queen you once again use that uh shelter queen f5 this time uh, imagine sometimes engines say even queen g queen h7 queen g8 who's sane would go with that i don't want to teach you to play chess like this no play queen f6 go with e5 or go back with the queen on f6 
after bishop d3, queen f6, castles, knight b6. I really have to say, having the queen on f6 means um, having a little bit, you know, like misplaced queen. Oh, but okay, we gotta accept that because we won the pawn. Knight on b6 is an especially good piece either. And here I believe when they play a4, which is the most logical move, chasing that knight away, bishop g4, queen c2, uh, uh, watch out, they might even threaten some bishop g5 to trap the queen, you take on f3 and playing g5. This is what I like about these positions, but you gotta know this. You can't come up with this, these lines just like that and say, hey, I wanna play like this. <laughs> you gotta come up with all these moves. You have to know for the shelter with the, when you take on b2 and when you give check first, you have to know the line that you take on b2, you sack the piece. It looks like you sack the piece. Then you gotta know that you have to give check to get a piece back. Then you have to know that when they start chasing your queen away after e3, you gotta find the shelter with d6, queen, queen f5, um, queen d7, or queen f5, queen f6 in some other variations. Those are the possibilities and those are the uh, paths for black to uh, run away from uh, other threats and chasing by white. And finally, I just wanna show you the main line with the bishop f4. Uh, I recently played the Serbian semifinals. I lost the game against international master uh, Vuk Djordjevic, who, who on regular basis plays this Trumpovsky with white pieces and plays it really well. But I had a great position. So I really had a great position. I really enjoyed it and I played c5. I always play c5. I won uh, most of my games here, but I lost this one and what can I do? I didn't lose certainly because of, um, because of variation. I lost because of uh, bad playing the middle game. Anyways, after d takes e5, you just go d5. And once again, you go with the same kind of a thing. If they capture, you just go with a queen b6 famous trick. Uh, another thing is if they go with d5, you instantly go with e6. Don't play queen b6 here because, believe it or not, bringing the bishop here will uh, force them to play a good version of semi Benoni because after e knight c3, e4, and <coughs> they did not commit any kinds of uh, structural weaknesses on, in the game and on the queen side such as b3 and so on and finally if d5 e6 let's say if they ever take i always want to make sure about one thing you play f takes e6 d5 and you have a very lovely type of the game you play bishop e7 short castle and f file is yours so that's why they have to play f3 and specialty is bishop d6 not many guys know about the specialty with the bishop d6 but it's a very modern one. During the COVID, a couple of GMs play their games like this and won their games with this bishop d6. After, uh, b if d takes, d takes, of course. Um, and uh, they cannot take on e4 because you take on f4 and you win the bishop pair in full control of the dark squares. So they got to take the bishop. Uh, when they take the bishop, you take by knight. And when they take the center, it's very interesting. Any knight c3, you have a very lovely um, wing attack with b5. But most of these guys, of course, play for most logical uh, centralizing move. And now you go with b5. Who would say that a game like this could be good for you? But it's very interesting. Uh, most of you probably would ask me, hey, what if this? No, knight f5. Now you threaten queen h4. Now you threaten to jump somewhere this. And they can't take on b5 because you always have this uh, queen h4 or queen a5 jacks. Knight c3, you just go with b4. You just go with queen c7 to defend the pawn. It's on c3 to play rook c1 and to go after the x-rays and after the queen. Uh, you just go with d takes, castles, and somehow you're so fast in completing your development and equalizing the game. Who would say that? So after like e4, b5, they all go with the queen d2, castles, knight c3, b4. And when they play knight a4, you just play bishop a6 and uh, you have an amazing game. With a black piece is on your question, Maya. What do we play if knight c5? You take, take, queen c7, and go with knight a6. We have a nice development advantage. They have a weak king, and I want to break with f5 and take advantage of that king. In, the, in case they take, you take knight a2, queen a5, b3, e5, and at some point c4, rook fc8. Black is just great. Uh, black has full control of the game on the queen side. I absolutely, absolutely adore this game from black's point of view. 
And that's why I believe knight d1 should be the best move. Once again, you solve the problem of the light square bishop by exchanging it. Playing queen b6, knight a6. What kind of problems can you have in a game like this? You just play e5 and f5. For example, in one game was e5. He broke on the queen side with f5. And black was amazing. So if you really want to treat this position in the uh, right fashion, you should remember that after bishop f4, c5, any d5, we should be meeting with e6 and bishop d6. That's enough for now. I showed you these ideas with b5 and b4, bishop a6, and that's what you have to know. And finally, let's go with f3. That's the main line. A specialty here is queen a5. Specialty here is queen a5 because we're just forcing them to play uh, c3. Uh, when they play c3, you just go back with the knight. And now let's see what's the point. They have a couple of possibilities. Uh, knight d2, d5, or d takes c5. Those who take on c5, they um, left control of the center. So we take by queen, and we just want to go with e5 and d5. I believe a game like this should immediately be considered better for black. And I don't want to bother you with this one. Another thing is knight d2. Knight d2, I played a game, tournament game against 1fm. Uh, I captured knight b3 and brought my queen back to d8. That's the most modern approach. Uh, that guy against me played bishop b8. That's a suspicious move. Of course, that the main move is he takes d4. The guy took on b8 and took by queen, threatened upon on a7. I played b6. He played e4, uh, wanted, wanted to play e5. I played e6. On any e5, I would just jump with the knight on d5 and control of the center is mine. And after castles, I played queen c7. So I want to play b5 and b4 and kind of launch the attack. Why? Because I got a bishop here. The guy played king b1 and I destroyed him in 25 moves. I was black. I just, uh, you know, like launched the attack on the queen side at some point and won the game very convincingly. That was my tournament game from 2021 against an FM. They always go with c takes d4. And here you play kind of French defense. And all I'm going to show you here is nothing else but plan. So you just go e6 and you play French type of defense. So you play French type of defense. And when they go like this, remember the following plan. I'm not going to show anything else. So you bring the knight back like in French. You go knight e6 like in French. You chase the knight away like in French, threatening a4, queen b6 and so on. But stop for a moment. Don't actually, I'm not going to go with this arrow queen b6 because there is something else i want to show you as a plan we want to provoke them to do a4 if they do a4 knight goes on b6 and now you would say so what do we find so special about knight uh, going here now uh, friends we want to go with this and we want to go with this and we want to go with this and uh, that's a specialty because we're finding these two squares for our knights as a possibly weak squares for white and our knights can dominate there so it's a very very lovely type of the game uh, so you absolutely absolutely should enjoy in this type of position for example bishop b5 i play bishop b7 rook c1 knight b4 knight c3 let's go with the knight on c4 fantastic control of the queen side and that's what you have to remember finally the main line goes with uh, queen a5 c3 and d5 on d5 you play e6 you take on d5 uh, don't forget uh, they can push e5 and to take on d5 because you have this tempo move if bishop a3 you play d4 and you're uh, so much better and if they go bishop c1 all you have to remember is that you sack a piece you sack a piece what are you what is the uh, guy uh, what is he talking about? Knight c6, track grabbing the central pawn. G4 looks like a PC strap, but now we have this queen d8 move. That's the point because when they take, we play queen h4 and we play d6. Believe it or not, with an open game for our pieces, we're just a lot better than white. And that's all you have to remember there. And that's why they have to go with e takes d5, d6, and here, in my opinion, it's better to play queen d2, uh, where you play just bishop e7, bring your queen back to d8, and play knight bd7, a6, b5, and go with the queen side attack. For example, I played the tournament game in Serbian league. The guy played like this, knight bd7, 
played something like knight g on e2, I believe, or knight b5, knight h5, and I played a6, and I absolutely had a nice initiative. Uh, but if they go with knight g on e2, you go knight h5, knight e5, and f5. And your game is just good. You play kind of uh, Benoni defense, which looks good with a bishop on e7 that you can use on those dark squares. If they play instead of that knight a3, that, that's what happened in my game like three days ago. I played bishop e7, knight c4, queen d8, a4 to prevent b5. Cancels, and he played something like queen to d2. Uh, after queen d2, you play knight a6 because you want to place your knight on c7 going after this. And uh, he, after like 20 minutes of thinking, played absolutely the best move, played knight a3, and wanted to, if knight c7, to play c4. In that case, he would solidify the center and control of the center, but would also lock my knight on c7. So here I just played something like rook e8, bishop c4, bishop f8, knight e2, it was like this, and then I play knight c7, b6, bishop e7. Black absolutely has a very lovely game. Let's be honest, white got nothing out of the opening. Uh, I just want to tell you one, one thing, that when I played against uh, on Iceland in Reykjavik 2009, I believe, last round for the prize, I was white against Igor Alexander Natov, uh, he went for knight a6 in similar type of the game. I went for g4, castles knight e2, knight c7, played knight to e3, and he played a very lovely knight d7 move. He wants to have some bishop g5, bishop h4 ideas. He wants to break on the queen side with f5. He also wants to go with the rook on e8. I played king f2. Uh, I was trying to be uh, very original, uh, but at the same time, in attacking mode, he played rook e8. And I played queen d2, and at this moment, I didn't feel uh, the danger of this position. Don't forget, I was playing this from white's point of view. And black was uh, Igor Alexander Natav, strong GM, and uh, second of Rajabov uh, for the past 15, 20 years. He was black. He played bishop h4, played knight e5. I played knight f4. He played this, threatening queen takes f4. I played knight c4, and... Uh, you can't play your chess with the king on f2. He played bishop g4. I always say when you play against Trompovsky, probably this game should be a model game how you should play with the black pieces or how you shouldn't play with white pieces. This is what he did. And in already 21 moves, he was winning with black pieces and I lost the game. Uh, all things considered, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that I gave you some other type of ideas and uh, ways of playing against Rompovsky. Yes, you can find on the channel uh, bishop g5, second move d5, but now you will even have this uh, more interesting and entertaining option with the second move knight e4. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the lecture and we just carry on with this quality stuff. Thanks so much for watching and see you guys.